Hello and welcome back to the Project Hercules Diaries for another exciting update on the sprocket spacers, not wheel spacers, sprocket spacers. I can't believe nobody's picked me up on this, but uh, last couple of videos was talking about these things, which will space the sprocket away from the wheel. And I've been calling them wheel spacers. And of course they're not. The wheel spacer is this thing here that spaces the wheel from the bearing inner to the frame. This is a sprocket spacer that goes on the spigot of the, the wheel hub and spaces the sprocket out from the wheel. Uh, and of course there are two of them because it's a twin chain drive and there are uh, there's a sprocket on either side. So normally I would wait until I've put the holes in here so it's a finished part um, and then show you the, the, the finished part. But I'm doing something quite interesting behind me on the bridge port and I'm getting to use a, a thing that I've had for ages and never had time to use. So have a look at this behind me. I'm now facing the other way in front of the mighty bridge port. Looks quite good when you nail down, doesn't it? So artistic shots, probably want some steam coming out and dramatic, do, 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 a bit of Rammstein or something. Um, yeah, that would be better. Maybe, maybe the next video. So um, on this uh, bridge port here, what I'm doing, I'm doing, I've gone back old school uh, because there is a little bit of backlash in the lead screw, especially the one uh, that does the X coordinate. But there's also a bit of backlash in this this front screw as well. I don't want to just write the bit of code that does five holes to drill the holes around the the PCD for the wheel space for, I've done it again for the sprocket spacer uh, the little bit of backlash would mean they're not quite where they need to be and I was going to go around my mate Matt's today and borrow Optimus Prime which is is his sort of CNC Bridgeport equivalent with ball screws but then I thought well no let's let's go old school let's see if we can do it on the rotary table let's see if we can do it by hand by twiddling knobs today rather than another way so I've spent quite a bit of time uh, putting the clamping the the first of the two sprocket spacers onto the rotary table I've clocked this in so it's in the center of the table so when you wind the handle and rotate the table this stays central and I've also clocked it so it's directly under the center of the spindle head here so what I need to do is to move the table back by 42 and a half millimeters which is what I've calculated as the pitch circle radius is uh, and then I can drill a hole turn this round by 72 degrees drill a hole turn it round by 72 degrees and do that five times uh, and then once more I'll be back where I started uh, and then because the two sprocket spacers spigot together, I can put one on top of the other and just uh, spot drill through. So that's the plan. But of course, I, I need to move the table that way. And having converted to CNC, I've got no graduations on here. So I won't be able to measure exactly 42 and a half millimeters that direction. But I do have this baby, which is a long reach DTI. And... Um, it goes, this is the travel of the thing here. So it's more than 42 mil. It's just, it's about 44 millimeter travel. It's in millimeters, which is why I'm working in mil today. Normally I prefer to work in Imperial because that's what the machines are all um, graduated in. So um, what, I've able to, what I'm able to do is to put this onto the, the, the table here. And then when I manually wind the handle, uh, that should tell me when I've got to 42, it's actually 42.24 millimeters. So when I've got to that dimension, I can stop. I can lock both of the tables uh, and then um, I can manually pull this quill down here just by hand and that will um, drill the holes. So that's where I'm at at the moment when the part is finished which should be later today I'll drop a quick update so you can see the two finished parts, two sprocket spacers and then it's on to the next job. Meanwhile on my right this is turning 90 degrees to the right. I kind of figured that if I kept turning around like this and then like that, you might all get dizzy watching it. So the, the mighty guzzy's back together. It's got new tapered needle roller bearings in the, the head and uh, I had to make a special tool last week just to pull the bearing in as in. But I've done about 450 miles on it in the past week and it's brilliant. Yeah. It's, it handles much, much, much better. Also, what made a big difference is putting some air in the tyres. <laughs> when the front tyre is quite low, that, that doesn't help either. So that's where I'm at at the moment. I did consult the Zeus charts. 
Ah, the mighty Zeus charts, yes. And, and that was telling me here the coordinates that to, I would need to dial in if I know the pitch circle diameter. Uh, but I don't have a digital readout. So th this wasn't actually that useful to me. So I got into the engineer's reference books instead. But there we go. It's not the most glamorous of jobs. It's just a spacer. And when it's finished, you probably won't even see uh, the finished part because it'll be behind the sprocket. But it needs to be done. And every little job done today is a job less to be done to get on the road and one day this will be thundering to uh, a custom show near you so that's that's it for now as usual thank you for watching more updates will follow